I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and we're here today with Jesse Nolan from the Jazz Education Network. This is pretty cool. I, I learned about your organization um, when I was with Eastman Guitars back several years ago, and I attended one of the conferences. Tell people all about Jazz Education Network. You know, what are you guys all about? What do you do? Who are your members? What is it you're trying to achieve? What's your mission statement? Go ahead. You're on, Jesse. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for doing this, Bob. I really appreciate, appreciate the interest in the organization, and I'm really happy to hear that you've attended our conference. Yeah, the mission statement of the Jazz Education Network is to uh, promote performance, advance education, and develop new audiences for you know, what we consider to be America's greatest uh, cultural creation and export around the world, which is jazz music. And our flagship event, which you mentioned you've attended before, is our annual conference. Uh, we will be having our 14th annual conference next year, uh, next January, here in Orlando, which is where I live. Um, and that's going to be, oh, I've been saying the dates for the 2022 conference. I believe it's January 5th. 4th starts January, Wednesday January 4th um, but that is sort of the really the com the conference is actually really the culmination of an entire year's worth of work that the organization does that sort of culminates and leads up to the conference um, so within that mission statement that I mentioned we have various programs uh, that aim to achieve that mission so of course our conference works to uh, develop audiences uh, we have students uh, from all over the world attending our conference who have never been to a jazz conference before. They might play jazz in their school, but they've never been to a jazz concert. Uh, so coming to our conference might be the first time they ever experience, you know, a plethora of live jazz over the course of a few days. We also have some other audience development initiatives. Uh, one of them, which is sponsored by the Herb Alpert Foundation, uh, they are called Jazz to You Grants. And so, um, our, our educator members, our nonprofit organization members can write a grant to bring a jazz artist in to perform a concert for their community or for their students or for their school. Oftentimes these folks often deliver clinics as well uh, alongside their performance if, it's, if they're going into a middle school or a high school. And that of course works in tandem with the mission of our advancing education. So there's a lot of overlap between our programs. We also have a scholarship program, two new scholarships this year, even uh, eight total. Students can uh, uh, fill out, a, a, well, now it's two applications. It used to be a single application, but we have a separate one for our new uh, Dave Brubeck Legacy Scholarship because it involves uh, students submitting a piece of their own uh, composition, jazz composition. But we have eight scholarships that we reward to uh, high school and university students depending on certain criteria. One of them is for a high school bassist. Uh, one of them is a women in jazz scholarship named after our co-founder, Mary Jo Papich. Another one is named after our other co-founder, Dr. Lou Fisher. We have a scholarship uh, endowed named after Jamie Abersold and also one named after the great jazz educator and my mentor, David Baker from Indiana University. We have a sisters in jazz collegiate combo that that uh, is by audition only and culminates in a performance at our conference. Uh, that is all part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Um, we have a Young Composer Showcase uh, that also culminates at our conference. Uh, young composers submit their works and those are adjudicated. And the cool thing about that program is everyone who submits their work gets feedback, not just the folks who are accepted. So all the submissions are reviewed by uh, jazz composers like Greg Yasinitsky, John Clayton, some really heavy folks. And all the students get notes and then some are invited to the conference to have their uh, music performed by uh, one of the military bands. Uh, so this year was the Airmen of Note, uh, which was very cool. And then we also have a lot of programs that are, are sort of just going on daily. Um, we have research webinars. We do at least one or two webinars a month, which started during COVID, but have been really popular. So we've continued to do those. And then of course, you know, we have our memberships. A lot of the stuff that I'm talking about are student initiatives and programs and, and our webinars are free, but we have multiple memberships. Um, we really, really want people to become members of Gen because of the benefits that being a member gives you specifically uh, for music educators and professional players, uh, becoming a full member of Gen. You get a, a bunch of things you can use with your students and in your classroom. Every two months we, we, uh, we don't publish it, but we release a free chart uh, and we do six of those a year and they're charts by 
Uh, there, there are charts for all different types of ensembles. There's two vocal charts a year, two jazz combo, and two jazz ensemble charts. Uh, we've had composers like Wynton Marsalis, Vincent Gardner, um, all, folk, all sorts of folks, and, and uh, those charts are available exclusively through Gen. Uh, our members get free downbeat subscriptions. They get access to hundreds of online clinics that we've already done and performed. Folks use those for professional development. And of course, they get to be part of this network, the Jazz Education Network. That is just this amazing group of, of members um, from all parts of the music industry. I mean, it's not just the educators and the uh, and the performers, but of course we have tons of folks like yourself who are in the music industry, who are in publishing, who are in um, you know own record labels, who run companies that create amazing art that is inspired by jazz. Uh, one of the coolest things is coming into the exhibit hall at the conference because. I think it's a little bit unlike the normal exhibit hall. There's there's giant jazz quilts hanging up, and of course you have your instrument manufacturers. But there's a plethora of of folks who who are part of this of this community, um, and it's Jen's goal to kind of bring us all together. Uh, it used to be once a year. Now it's as much as possible because we've been coming together so much online. But all of that stuff all of our programs and our development initiatives uh, all that stuff is uh, all available on our website which is jazzednet.org yeah that's like the rundown that's the five minute elevator pitch <laughs> sir. That's, that's a hell of an elevator you got there man. i mean there's so much you know, <laughs> you know it's, it's 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 funny we so many people know Gen as a conference organization like hey you know they often people even call the organization the Gen conference Mm -hmm. um, and our goal, especially during COVID, has been to try to change that mindset and try to really extend the the uh, the benefits and the and the power of being a member of this organization into every, folks' everyday life, um, which is where some of these other initiatives started and the webinars and um, the Jazz to You grants and the charts. Right, we want folks playing music that they got through Jen because of their membership and hey, it was free. And you know, the mem that membership is $96 a year. I don't know where you could buy 96 or six charts for your ensemble for $96. Sometimes one chart, you know, if it, mm -hmm. it one or two charts, in my experience as a, as a educator are 50 to a hundred bucks a piece. So. That's a, a great rundown. And so you walk into the conference. We'll talk about a couple of things here. You walk into the conference and as you, you spoke um the first thing you notice that the one i went to was in new orleans yeah and uh the first thing you notice is that there are, there's bands playing everywhere like in rooms and in the hallways and you know and in the lobby you have big bands set up in the lobby you've got more like you know quartets and things going on all over the place um obviously it's is jazz education and most of the people that are in there are high school and college students i'm, I'm assuming that's that's what i seem to witness sure um so I, i'm gonna switch hats real quick because i spent uh about 17 years in the classroom as a k-12 educator teaching mm -hmm. jazz and then four as a professor also teaching jazz i've noticed a steady increase in like the number of students who are interested in in enrolling in jazz band in high school or in the jazz program at the college that I teach in that are guitarists. Right. Um, so like, you know, a, a community college or a small university might have two jazz bands, but you might have five guitarists who want a spot, you know? Right. And I, I, I felt that that was most common previously in my seat in the drum chair. It wasn't unusual in college for there to be two drummers splitting the chair, but we right. never had two guitarists or three guitarists. Right. Um, so I noticed that as a teacher, um, from a larger perspective, I've, uh, I've definitely seen a much higher, not interest, but appearance, you know, it's, it's one of those things that like, you, you know, was it happening already and it just wasn't showing up mm -hmm. and now things are coming, you know, things that have been happening already are coming into the light, but there are much more. Uh, there are many more groups and a, a lot higher interest in uh, the what I would call the electronic instruments, things that plug in, right. uh, including guitar. But we're seeing like in our membership surveys, a lot more guitarists, uh, right. a lot more folks who are using uh, modular synthesizers and other electronic instruments in their compositions and right. in their music. Um, we're seeing groups, you know, like like somebody like Dave Stryker 
for example. Dave's a good buddy of ours. Yeah, and somebody that I've, I've known since I was in college who, you know, it is um, really becoming known at, you know, I mean, I, I look at his trajectory alone, like his new album has Patatucci and Blade on it. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and and uh, I saw him at the conference a couple of years ago, the last before this one, the last in person conference, which was uh, uh, New Orleans, where, where I think you were. Um, but I think guitarists are being seen more uh, uh, in the in the modern times as, and and in some ways this isn't this is true of like a lot of rhythm section players, except for maybe pianists who've always been seen as leaders and composers, but guitarists as leaders as the as the main composer as the persons whose ideas have been put forth through the musical offering of the group um i felt like i've always had i always i always feel like i i jive well with guitarists rhythmically i don't know if that's like a because guitar is so percussive or whatever it sure. is or because my dad was a guitarist and i grew up playing motown with my dad <laughs> um but but i i think there's been something maybe elusive about the instrument and and about the trajectory of the instrument in in our art form maybe because of its close proximity to other genres you know which takes sure. us in another direction of course but well one of the things that i noticed when i was when i was there is that um so there's a big band and there's a, a guitar chair in the big band and um the piano and, and the guitar were getting along quite well sometimes they comped somewhat together you know sometimes it was the you know the the keyboard the piano player keyboard player if you will you know doing a, a lot of comping guitar you know they're swapping up getting along quite nicely which is which is great um but i was i was really surprised at the amount of time that was given to a guitarist for solos um, you know, usually think of the solo as, you know, like the trumpet, saxophone, et cetera, et cetera or trombone and all that kind of thing. But uh, I was I was pretty impressed and uh, with that. And actually, it was quite electronic. I mean, it was it was more like it, instead of sounding like, you know, Wes Montgomery, it sounded more like Jeff Beck or uh, John McLaughlin or Al DiMiola or one of the more modern, if you will, uh, rock rock influenced players. And uh, that was pretty impressive to see that that group come together in a um, in an academic setting I mean you know anything can happen out there in the real world but in an academic setting for that to be um, uh, you know to be fostered and, and nourished and, uh, and encouraged was was pretty incredible because um, everybody thinks of you know Freddie Green you know chunk 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 and there's an art form to that too so I'm, I'm not I'm not putting any of that down but I, I thought it was really, really cool. Is there something else you'd like to, to bring up while we're here before we I do want to bring up, up one, one more thing because you touched Please. on it when you were talking about hearing more modern sounding, you know, tone, from, right. you know, in, in, in the jazz idiom. We often, so our conference uh, to, to perform or do a clinic or whatever on our conference, you have to submit your recordings of your group, right? It's an application right. process. And this year it's going to open April 1st. But Folks often come to the conference and they go, how come there's no fusion? Where, is it, where are the fusion bands? Mm -hmm. And I turn around and say to them, do you lead a fusion band? And they said, yes. And I said, then I want to see your submission. <laughs> because we would love to put more of that kind of stuff on our conference, right. more modern stuff, you know. And, and we, would, we want to hear all of these new ideas and new sounds. But as you can imagine, the vast majority of our submissions fall squarely into like one of the genre categories of jazz. This is a this is a bebop group. This is, you know, a vocal jazz quartet. Uh, and then maybe there's like, you know, one free jazz group. But we would like to have 10 free jazz groups or well, 10 gonna... fusion groups so that we can pick two or three and put them for have a nice offering of that on the conference. I'm going to challenge you. OK. <laughs> OK, because uh, I did go to university uh, for jazz. And I got to tell you that um, that's not encouraged. I know. I I, you know, I by, did as well by the talk. faculty yeah. uh, at all. What's encouraged is um, you know there will never be another you or Olio or whatever the you know the tunes are, um, you know. But I think you're onto something for sure. And um, if uh, I think that's wonderful, actually, I, I I like I like all kinds of jazz. I like everything from you know soup to nuts. But 
uh, on the soup end, there's, there's one thing and on nuts end there's something else. And nuts, you know, we get into fusion and, you know, people, some people think of that as a dirty word, but we, we know what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, that, that's incredible to hear you say that. Um, and um, like, this, like this year, for example, the closing act on the conference is a group from Chicago called the Lowdown Brass Band. Yeah. And they have not one, but two rappers in their group. And they're, <laughs> but they're a second line set up. So it's like tuba and a DJ yeah. and a drummer and some horns. Yeah. And they like use the idiom, but change the style. And, you know, we got a couple write-ins. Some folks wrote into us afterwards and they were like, it wasn't my cup of tea, but if Jen's goal was to bring young people to the table, they for that, for that set, the kids were out of their seats at the edge of the stage, waving their arms right. like they were at a rock and roll concert. Right. And Something about this hit, but they had just sat in the audience and watched two hours of like big band jazz, straight right. ahead jazz, bop. Right. And then this happened. And to me, that's like the joyous thing about the conference, but it's also the amazing thing about this music because one song might be playing and a certain subset of the audience, it vibes with them and they're tapping their feet and they might get up and dance. And, you know, two hours later, something else hits, those people leave and half of the crowd stands up and is jamming, you know? You know, you know, you know here's the deal. When you go out for, for a good meal, you know, sometimes it's Italian, sometimes it's Mexican, sometimes it's, uh, you know, what sushi, sometimes it's a steak or a burger or a vegan or whatever. It's all good food, man. It's yes, all sir. good food, whether it's, you know, old school, new school, or school that hasn't even been thought of yet. It's all cool. So it, the main thing is that people are people are uh, creating and expressing themselves in a creative way. And that, Absolutely. That's, that's what I think is cool. Well, listen, I'm going to we're going to uh, sign off for now. I can't tell you how much I really appreciate this. So Jesse Nolan yeah, with you. Jazz Education Network, and we really encourage everybody out there to check out their website, check out who they are, consider donating because it is a 501c3, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. All right, 501c3. And also, um, you know, you can volunteer locally to, you know, help them uh, get this thing going. You know, we we in America have an indigenous art form. It's, this is us, you know, this is our art form. And we're known throughout the world. And in Europe, it's in, in, in Europe and Japan and China, it's incredibly honored. Uh, we could do a better job here in the U.S., um, you know, making it a much higher than one and a half to two percent of the total music that's sold is jazz. And guitar is probably one tenth of that. And that's just a guess. So wouldn't it be really cool if we could just bump that up to about five or six percent where, you know, because can you imagine the ripple in the, in the in the finances of the players that are out there if the music that was being sold and which means concerts are coming and all of that went from one and a half to two percent to five percent or ten percent of the total market and this is our our art form as americans i I'm, you can see i'm pretty passionate about that so at any rate everybody out there go check out jen check out what they're doing get involved encourage you know people to see what's happening out there jesse thank you so much man thank you bob really appreciate it buddy yeah bye bye now take care bye